Welcome to Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's game two of the two-game series between the Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Everybody, I'm Don Orsillo. As always, joined by Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, today we get our second look at Anthony Renato, the Red Sox prospect. He's our Chevy key player to watch. Well, very impressive in his first outing against the New York Yankees. And, you know, he had to be very nervous going into that game, making the first major league start. But he did a great job going six innings. He went four hits, two in runs. Would like to improve on the walks. He did have four walks, 91 pitches, 53 of those for strikes. And what was so amazing about this, you know, this is the team that he grew up admiring, the New York Yankees. He gets his first major league strikeout against Derek Jeter. I mean, you can imagine the emotions that was going through this guy's mind, you know, as he's on the mound pitching in his first major league game. He should be much more relaxed today. He's had time to be around the club, to be around major league players, be around major league clubhouses. And today goes against the Cincinnati Reds. Reds, you know, which it should be, I, I would think, the second time out, a little bit more relaxing for him. Red Sox trying to make it two in a row against the Reds. Another huge home run last night for Ioannis Cespedes. He got it done on Sunday, did it again last night. He's been fun to watch. Red Sox and Reds coming up next. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Sullivan Tire and Auto Service, Toyota's website for deals by Toyota.com, McDonald's, I'm loving it, and by your Subaru dealers of New England. Welcome back inside the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati as we check in with Gary Streisky. Guys, if it's not going to be Brandon Workman on the mound, he's glad to see his best friend Anthony Renato making his now second career big league start. And as Jerry was pointing out, this one should be a little easier considering it's not back at Fenway Park in prime time against the team he grew up watching in the New York Yankees, as Brandon Workman explains in our Geico quote of the day. Yeah, you know, that first one for anybody is always, you know, kind of nerve-wracking, whatever position you're at. And, um, you know, he was able to, like you said, knock out a whole bunch of them right out of the gate, playing the Yankees on Friday night or Saturday night, whatever it was. And, um, you know, so I don't think this one's going to be an easier one or anything like that. But he did, you know, knock some of those firsts out of the way last time. 
That'll be fun to watch here today as he'll take the hill for the Red Sox. Let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup. It's brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Leading it off and at second base is Brock Holt with Daniel Nava in right field batting second. You want to Cespedes in left. Mike Napoli at first base with Kelly Johnson at third base. Xander Bogarts at shortstop bat six with Jackie Bradley Jr. in center. Dan Butler does the catching bats eight getting his second major league start. And Anthony Renato bats ninth. Today's red starting pitcher is presented by New England Nissan dealers and Mike Leak on the mound. 25th start of the year, 9 and 10 with a 3.42 earned run average. Ready to work to Brock Holt. And the first pitch of the ball game is in there for strike one. Last time out, a loss against Miami. Seven innings, giving up five hits and two runs. And again, individually coming in a game under 500 at 9 and 10. 71 degrees to get the ball game started today. Beautiful day here today in Cincinnati. Blue skies above Great American Ballpark. This one line foul down the left field line, and it's one and two to Brock Holt. I think you can see that leaks a little bit of a, a sinker ball type pitcher. A lot of movement on that fastball. That sinks. Uh, two hitters, right handed, left handed hitters. If on, should get a lot of ground balls. Lique Reds first round draft choice eighth overall in 2009. He's 26 years of age. Full count now to Brock Holt. And she was a first round pick eighth overall in 2009. That's down low and he walks the leadoff hitter as Brock Holt heads down to first base. Let's take a look at the Reds defense. They are first of the National League with 55 errors on the season. Todd Frazier will be at third base. Zach Kozot the shortstop. Christopher Negron at second base and Brian Pena the first baseman left to right. Ryan Ludwig, Billy Hunter, uh, Billy Hamilton, excuse me, Skip Schumacher and Devin Messerocco doing the catching. Umpiring crew, Jerry Meals, the crew chief behind the plate. Paul Emel at first, Chris Conroy at second, and Jordan Baker, the umpire at third. Lead runner on for the Red Sox here in the first inning, and here is Daniel Nava. As he takes strike one. A different looking lineup today for the Red Sox. Dustin Pedroia getting the day off, so Holt at second base, and Nava batting in the two spot. Bolt at first. A one to Nava. There's another strike. This one picks up the outside corner apparently and it's 0 and 2. Nava three for his last 20. One for four here last night with a double. A bounce in, taking off for second is Holt. Here's the throw, it's high, and is backed up as to second base goes. Holt broke right away, and a ball in the dirt, and takes second base. Now, yeah, very good heads up base running here by Brock Holt. The ball's going to bounce as a breaking ball, trying to backhand it to Mezzarocco, the catcher, and uh, Holt picks that up. Off to second base, he goes in a scoring position with nobody out. A wild pitch that gets Holt to second base. Nava with a count of one and two. Line down the right field line foul off the tarp. We'll take the family to the ballpark for one last hurrah for the end of summer family pack brought to you by our friends at Boston Duck Tours and the shops at the Prudential Center. The special package includes tickets, free parking at the Prudential Center garage, and free Boston Duck Tour rides to and from Fenway Park. Fans can purchase tickets at RedSox.com slash family packs. Under its second, nobody out of one, two, and Nava fouls it off the other way this time. against right-handers hitting at 275. 
And both of his home runs have come against right handed pitching. On the ground up the middle into center field a base hit for Nava. Here comes Brock Holt around Billy Hamilton's throw is going to be offline and the Red Sox take a one nothing lead. Well, the throw to the plate Nava takes second base and the Red Sox lead at one to nothing even before there's an out here in the first inning. Now we talked about ground balls and here is a ground ball but it's right up the middle for a base hit. terrible throw by Billy Hamilton in center field. He just overthrows everybody and it allows Nava to get in the scoring position at second base. There was not even a need for to throw for home plate for that. Just go to second base. Give the Red Sox the run. Mm, attempt to keep the double play in order. It didn't work out that way. Nope. It's a single and an RBI for Nava. Takes second on the throw. And here is Ioannis Cespedes. Cespedes now two home runs in a Red Sox uniform and 19 on the year. Last night buzzed back by Jonathan Broxton right underneath the chin and then on the very next pitch taking it out of the yard to straightaway center field some 433 feet away. If you have that kind of ability that's the way to answer. Cespedes will take the strike one and one. Was the eighth inning of last night's game and the second straight game that he has produced to go ahead home run in the eighth inning. First did it on Sunday at L.A. against the Angels, a three-run shot in that game. So all three of the Red Sox runs in the 3-2 victory against the Halos. Ball two, two and one. Leak still looking for his first out here of the ball game. Walk a wild pitch, a single, a run in. Now Cespedes on a ground ball, softly hit to Cozart. It's short. His throw in time as Nava takes third base. Well, tune in August 19th and 20th to Nesson for coverage of the WEI Nesson Jimmy Fund Telethon presented by Arbella Insurance Foundation. Arbella Insurance Foundation here for the Jimmy Fund, here for good. Now, right away in this game, Cincinnati's going to pull the infield in with one out, down by a run. They have been having trouble scoring runs. At first base today, and he had 265, 14 homers, and 40 runs batted in. As he takes strike one, as David Ortiz made the start at first base defensively last night, and Napoli came off the bench to pinch hit. Now, today, Napoli starts a game at first, and Ortiz available off the bench. David last night going one for four in the ball game. And there for a strike and it's one and two now to Napoli. Mike go for his last nine at the plate. Johnson getting a start today at third base for the Red Sox and think fifth in the order. 2 2 is fouled off while running in on the hands of Napoli. Tune in to Red Sox Friday Night Fenway presented by Budweiser Friday at 5 30. Be sure to visit the Arc Lounge and Nightclub in Kenmore Square before every Red Sox game in August. Fans 21 and over can participate. Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ground ball infield in and the third baseman Frazier coming home but it's late throw to first that's late and the Red Sox lead it two to nothing. 
Well, a little bit of a screen there from the shortstop Zach Cozart stepping in front of Todd Frazier at third. That kind of cost him. The throw home is late and reaching at first is Napoli. And it's 2 0 Sox. Yeah, here's one of the cases, too, where a catcher not being able to block the pay plate probably cost him a run. You know, if he's able to block the plate, he gets that left foot out there, and uh, Nava probably doesn't even get to home plate. But I agree with you, Don. That shortstop uh, probably got in his way. The throw to first is not in time. So the Red Sox play in contact, and they pick up a run on it. Fielder's choice and RBI for Napoli, and Kelly Johnson takes strike one. Johnson at 215, six homers, 22 RBIs. The combined numbers between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Was traded for Stephen Drew. Johnson made his Red Sox debut on Sunday, playing at first base, was 0 for 4 against the Angels on Sunday. Ground ball towards short. Cozart will go to second for one. On to first for two. Double play wraps up the top of the first. But the Red Sox grab a pair of runs. The Reds as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Let's check out the Reds starting lineup. Leading it off is Billy Hamilton in center field with Chris Negron at second base. Todd Frazier at third, bats third with Devin Masaraco doing the catching. Brian Payne at first base. Brian Ludwig in left. Skip Schumacher in right. Zach Kozar at shortstop bats eighth. And Mike Leak, the pitcher, bats ninth. Today's Red Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Audi dealers. Experience the all new 2015 Audi A3 today. Anthony Renato, 22 games with the Paw Sox, 13 and 4, with a 2.58 earned run average. First time out with the Red Sox successful. As Billy Hamilton leads it off and shows bunt, but takes strike one. It was that successful start and win against the Yankees? Six innings, two runs. Walk four, struck out two. And what he showed us in that game was a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. And the third is Kelly Johnson. Hamilton always a bunt threat, but he swings through this and is down 0 and 2. Coming with the fastball right there quickly by Hamilton, who has struck out 90 times this season from the leadoff spot. Leads 
just about every National League rookie in almost every statistical category. 44 stolen bases on the year for Hamilton. Always a threat if he can get on. Slaps it foul. It's one and two still. It's 44 stolen bases, the most by a Reds player since Deion Sanders had 56 stolen bases in 1997. And the most by a Reds rookie since Chris Sabo had 46 back in 1988. In the dirt and it evens at two and two. There's the curveball from Renato. That time giving it down in the zone, so hoping that uh, Hamilton would chase it. Renato today becoming trying to become the first Red Sox rookie to begin his career with a win in each of his first two starts since Justin Masterson back in 2008. Ground ball right side and Brock Holt. Throws out Billy Hamilton one down. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are ninth in the league with 70 errors on the season. Kelly Johnson will be at third base. And the Bogots the shortstop. Brock Holt at second. And Mike Napoli the first baseman. Left to right. Yuena Cespedes, Jackie Bradley Jr. And Daniel Nava. And Dan Butler doing the catching for an auto. One down here in the bottom of the first inning. Chris Negron, the batter. Negron coming in at 241. Three homers and nine runs batted in. Late scratch in the lineup today. Jay Bruce taking out of the lineup. He's ill, so they made a switch. Put uh, Negron up in the two spot. Ludwig down at the bottom of the lineup. Grown hitless in his last 12 at bats. Promoted from Triple A Louisville on the 10th of July. After Brandon Phillips was injured. He's made 13 starts now. In there for a strike. That's two and one. In there for a strike, and it is now two and two. The grown spending the first half of the season with Louisville, 75 games a year to 269. And he lines one to right field, and that is going to be on a hop picked out there and right by Nava. Looked like he was going to try it, came in. A little bit undecided as to what he wanted to do, and it does get in for a base hit. That quickly sinking line drive hit by Negron and, and hit very hard. And Nava puts a charge on it, but had to pull up right at the last minute to make sure that ball does not get by him. That base hit coming on a curveball from Renato. One out, one on, and Todd Frazier, the batter. Razor an all-star this year. Swings away at the first pitch and pops it up on the first baseline. Brock Holt over by the seats runs out of room. Runs right into the tarp down there. He was pursuing, so is Napoli and Nava. See uh, Brock Holt looking and then changing directions and then looking again at just how close he was to that top. So another chance here for Todd Frazier down on the count 0 and 1. 
Popped up foul again, further back and out of play, 0-2. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now with the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download for free and start predicting every at-bat of every Red Sox game all season. Today, Preplay predicts Anthony Renato with those six innings, allow four earned runs, eight hits, two walks, and five Ks. One out, one on. Todd Frazier down on the count, 0-2. Fly ball out towards deep right center field, but Bradley Jr. has room and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Grown back to the bag at first, two down. So two down brings up Devin Mesoraco. We saw last night three hits in the game for Mesoraco. Catcher hitting it at even 300 coming in. 20 home runs, 62 runs batted in. Mazzarocco also an all star this year. Comes in with a four game hitting streak. He's all major league catchers in home runs and in RBIs. With his 20 home runs and 62 runs batted in, and he's a cleanup hitter for the Reds. Zarocco takes a ball. A good pitch. And then it's 1 0. That's a good 12 to 6 curveball from Renato. That's what we talked about last time against the Yankees. It has that 12 to 6 dip to it, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. A strike and it evens at one and one. Twenty home runs, a career high for Mezzarocco, the most by a Reds catcher since Eddie Toppenzi. The twenty-one home runs in 1999. At one point, Mezzarocco had homered in five straight games. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Fastball up. Fastball has been regularly about 92 miles an hour, whether it's been down in the zone or up in the zone, and that time upstairs, but no contact. Hamilton grounded out to second. McGrone single to right. Frazier flies out to second. Two down here and a runner at first base. Runner goes on the one two, pitches low, and the throw is going to be late. Stealing second base is Chris Negron. That's only the second steal, and he has his season, so he gets himself in a scoring position with two outs. Fastball down as the throw by Vasquez, but uh, not close to getting the groan. Two down, a grown in scoring position, and as a Rocco right now, the count of two and two. Popped up foul off to the right out of play. Well, Saturday on Dining Playbook with Billy Costa and Jenny Johnson. They come to you from Legal Harbor side, giving you Craig Breslow's top five spots to eat in the city, cooking with Jason Santos, and check in. The new kids on the block. It all begins Saturday at 9 a.m. Zaraco to left field shallow out goes Bogarts Cespedes comes in and makes the catch it ends the first inning Red Sox lead it to nothing after one.
question today of course being the last day of the Red Sox's three city ten game tour so we want to know which is your favorite ballpark from this trip Sox one Angel Stadium in Anaheim Sox two Bush Stadium in St. Louis or Sox three where we're at right now great American ballpark right here in Cincinnati text your answer to 536-536 message and data rates those may apply text help if you need it visit nesson.com backslash terms for all that fun legal stuff guys I'm going with the second choice St. Louis I'm going Angel Stadium, even though they're all good. And I'm going Great American Ballpark. So we're all across the board there. We're all yep. little place. Yep. Xander Bogarts leading it off here in the second inning. Bogarts at 233 coming in. Eight homers and 30 runs batted in. Lines it towards right center field. It's in for a base hit. Only Hamilton over to play it, but Xander Bogarts with a single to begin things here in the second inning. Now Bogarts now five for his last 28 as he gets a breaking ball right here. A hanging curveball that does a good job keeping his hands back on and moves it to the opposite field for the base hit. So let's see if the bottom of this lineup can get something going for the Red Sox. Bogarts with the leadoff single. In the second straight inning, the Red Sox have had the lead runner on. Jackie Bradley Jr. Throw to first and almost threw it away. Ryan Penny had to reach around the runner to pull that in. Two eleven with a home run and 28 runs batted in. Jackie bowled for his last 35. Back up the middle into center field, a base hit for Bradley as Bogarts will take second base. And that breaks up a string of old for his last 35 for Jackie Bradley Jr. Now the Red Sox starting off this inning like they did back in the first a walk and a base hit they quickly had a one nothing lead back to back base hits here as Bradley Jr. up the middle. Two on nobody out and Dan Butler the batter. Butler 227 four homers and 28 runs batted in in his 76 games with the Paw Sox this year. Second start for the Red Sox started on Sunday in the finale against Anaheim. As the pitch in there for a strike over the outside corner. His major league debut on Sunday against the Angels was 0 for 3 with a walk. On the ground, chopped softly left side. Frazier goes to second base, and they get the middleman there at second. Well, changing gears there as he goes to second base, was headed uh, towards first, but fires to second for the out. Now, yeah, pretty heads up play by Frazier down at third base. He realized he had the team, uh, the time rather, to get that lead man and get him off second base. So he makes a nice, easy flip to Negron, and they pick up the force out. First and third, one down. Anthony Renato, the pitcher, coming up here. First plate appearance in his career, and he's squaring. Gets it down right in front of the plate and going to second base. And there's Mezzarocco in the force out there. All right. So it is a force out at second base. For the second out of the inning as we send it down to Gary. Guys, he already got his first win out of the way. Anthony Ronald still looking for that first hit, laying down the bunt right there. Considering he hasn't had an at bat since he was a senior in high school, that was actually pretty good. He told me yesterday in preparation for this plate appearance, he took exactly 16 pitches in the batting cages, eight of them bunts. He laid a couple down, he just laid one down right there, and eight regular hacks. I think he's going to uh, stick to bunting. He says he's no Joe Kelly. 
And Joe Kelly last night with a stolen base in the ball game for the Red Sox. And on the other side for the Cincinnati Reds today, Mike Leak, who we've not yet seen at the play, he's got a home run this year. And three runs batted in as Red Sox here with runners at first and third. Two down. Brock Holt walked and scored in the first inning. Takes strike one. Bogarts at third. Renato across the diamond at first. Held on by Brian Pena. On the ground to third. It is bobbled by Frazier. Stays with it. Throw is going to be in time. Bang, bang, play at first, but uh, Holt is out number three of the second inning. Red Sox strand a pair, but lead it 2 nothing. TNT fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Ness and fan photo for a chance to be shown in our broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Today's fan photo is from Bradical, who was at yesterday's game here in Cincinnati. Well, Red Sox Nation here in Cincinnati. First visit since 2008 here to Cincinnati for the Red Sox. Only the third time ever. Coach here in 1975 at the old Riverfront Stadium. In the World Series back here in the regular season in 08 and back here in 2014 for a brief two game series this time. Brian Pena coming up to lead it off here for the Reds. Ryan Ludwig and Skip Schumacher to face Anthony Renato in the second inning. And you spent last year with the Detroit Tigers. First year of a two year deal with the Cincinnati Reds. I'll take strike one. All for four in last night's game. Snapped a career high 13 game hitting streak going over four last night. But starts a new one today with the base hit into center field. Lead off single for Brian Pena. GMC, see why incredible thinking is everywhere. Visit your local GMC dealer or go to GMC.com. Lead runner on for the Reds here in the second inning. Here's Ryan Ludwig. He's part of the change with Jay Bruce coming out of the lineup today. 
not feeling well. So Ludwig added to the starting nine, hitting at 255. Six homers and 33 runs batted in. Actually leads the team with 72 starts in left field. It's been a DH four times. Fly ball out to deep right field, sending Nava back almost to the track as he makes the catch out there. He really seems to be dying to the outfield so far in this day game. And that ball was down and away from uh, Ludwig, and uh, tough to generate that much power to the opposite field on a pitch like that. Daniel Nava had plenty of room before he got to the warning track to make the play on it. One down, Pena at first base, and Skip Schumacher coming up. 234 of the home run, 18 runs batted in for Schumacher. Pinch hit in the game last night. He's played left field, center field, right field, and second base so far for the Reds this season. Start of the year in the DL, the dislocated left shoulder. Came back on May the 3rd, and then in the middle of July had a concussion. Was placed on the seven day DL then. The concussion list. Runner goes and a liner into left field. It's going to get in for a base hit. So a little hit and run here for the Cincinnati Reds trying to manufacture some runs and now have two on with one out. One count and a hit and run put on. That's very unusual. Uh, this curveball right there from Renato and uh, a pretty good one, but the Schumacher going to the opposite field drops in front of Cespedes. And Cespedes holding the runner, Pena, to uh, second base. Two on, one away for Zach Bozart, the shortstop. Bozart celebrating his 29th birthday yesterday. So it's safely in five of his last seven games. High for ball two, two and oh. Well, the Reds sense the All Star break hitting at just 221. Including at 220 with runners in scoring position. Ranked last in the majors since the break with their batting average. And an on base percentage for that matter, 272. Popped up. Foul ground for Mike Napoli, who has room. And makes the catch for the second out of the inning. RBI baseball is back with all 30 MLB teams and 2014 players. Get the retro two button style baseball game you've been missing. Visit RBIGame.com for more details and download today on your console and mobile device. Two outs and two on. Mike Leak, the pitcher coming up. Mentioned he has a home run on the year. The breakdown form is. Seven for 51 on the season at 137. Ryan Payne with a single to center to begin the inning. Ryan Ludwig flied out to right. Skip Schumacher with a single to left. Now Zach Cozart. Fouling out to Mike Napoli at first base. Two on, two down. And a foul back to even the count at one and one. Talk about Renato being a little bit more rested today and maybe not as nervous. Same with uh, Dan Butler. Who is doing the catching today? Second time. Mm -hmm. 
Very high. Clanks off Butler's glove. And everybody's going to stay where they're at. Schumacher at first was headed to second base. He looked up and not going was Pena. So to throw the brakes on there at first base. And you see right there how uh, the runner Schumacher thought that Pena might go to third base. So he takes off looks up and is surprised that the big fella is still standing on second base. Almost ran himself into an out. Very high again. And a few of those at the top up there. It's three and one. Out of dealing with the other pitcher, but falling behind him three and one. On the ground at third base, Johnson will take it to third himself with the fourth shout that ends the inning. We head to the third inning, 2 0 Boston. Often it is right here in Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark. There is you getting your tie on earlier this morning, but you get all this room in the back, which is largely for equipment and other stuff. And then that's where the camera uh, gentleman sits and stands during our open. And then uh, what is a pretty good sized booth up front here? Yeah, it's a nice booth. I like it a lot. Your seat, my seat, and then uh, I think I settle in here and give you a view of what we're looking at from there. Pretty good range from the plate. Not a bad vantage point here at Great American Ballpark. And uh, plenty of space here and what is a great booth. Yeah, I like this ballpark. I really do. Yeah, it's very convenient. Everything's easy to get to the clubhouse, the dining room, the it's booth. Close. Everything's close. Too bad we don't come here more often. It's true. 2008 last time we were here and who knows when we'll be back. Nava, Jonas Cespedes, and Mike Napoli to bat in the inning. Two, three, and four. Nava with a single and an RBI in the first inning. Hops back out of the way of a pitch down and in.
And there's Cespedes, then we'll see Napoli. Left side and by the dive of Kozart at short into left and Navas two for two on the day. Third straight inning the Red Sox have had the lead runner on. Yeah Red Sox certainly have their share of hits uh, so far in the early going in this ball game. Nava gets that sinking fastball that's nice hitting right there he just goes right with it to the opposite field didn't try to hook it. Try to hook a pitch like that is probably going to end up a ground ball at second base. Instead, a base hit to the opposite field. Here's Cespedes who grounded out to Zach Kozart at shortstop in the first. 0 for 1. And on the ground, foul outside of third. Looking for the best deal on tires? There is only one place to go Town Fair Tire. The best prices and great free services because nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. No one to Cespedes. High chopper that is picked by Frazier at third goes to second and they get the lead runner but that's going to be it. And Daniel Nava at second base. Cespedes will reach on the fielder's choice one down. That's pretty nice play by Todd Frazier right there. Big high bounce and had to quickly make his mind up what he was going to do with it and what he's going to do is go to second base. It's really the only option he had right there to get a get an out. So they get the lead man at second base get the first out of the inning. One out, one on for Mike Napoli. Reached on a Phillies choice, picked up an RBI, his 41st of the year. Part of a two run first inning today for Boston. To left, Ludwig coming in to make the catch on the sinking line, or a little stagger there in the end. But he makes the grab for the second out of the inning. And a sinking line drive by Napoli hit very, very well, and a nice play by Ludwig out there in left field. He went back a step then came in and is able to make the catch glove up. And two down here in the third Cespedes at first and Kelly Johnson the batter. On the ground right side. Negron throws to first base for the out that ends the inning. Two and a half done, two nothing Red Sox.
fact of the game is Joe Kelly, the first Red Sox pitcher to steal a base since Bill Landis in 1969. The last Red Sox pitcher to steal third base was Tom Brewer in 1959. Twisted Tea Art Iced Tea, the refreshing Art Iced Tea. It tastes like real iced tea. Be a little twisted. No contest there, just standing up going into third base for Joe Kelly. Now it's on to the bottom of the third inning back in Cincinnati. Top of the order, Billy Hamilton leading it off here for the Reds. In the air to shallow right, Holt out, Nava in. And Brock Holt back pedals his way out there to make the catch. I'll tell you what was twisted about yesterday, and it wasn't to steal the third base. It was a ride home from the ballpark. <laughs> There's no question about that. And with the cab driver that we had last night. Now, we had to wait a while for the cab. We fortunately jumped into one with Joker Stig and, and uh, Dave and, and uh, Dave O'Brien, and we, the four of us are in this cab, <laughs> and I'm in the front seat. And I take a look at my left, and I see paper bag. <laughs> This guy's hitting the paper bag. Yeah. It was a first for me also. I had yeah. not been with a cab driver who was drinking while on duty. It looked like he had, had a couple. He'd had a couple. Years. He'd had a couple. <laughs> and he surrounded the ballpark. Totally surrounded the ballpark in traffic. <laughs> Big circle. Joe was getting a little antsy. Well, I think it was time to get out of that cab. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he was... Uh, he didn't care either. No, he really. He's originally from Massachusetts, yes. <laughs> from Revere, and uh, he was talking about you know something about Newton. He knew some people at Newton or something, and how how was Newton going? And, and I said, how much of that you got left in there anyway? You got a six pack down there, or what do you got left? He says, I'm almost dry. <laughs> uh, that was a, that was a first, and yes, uh, definitely a first. We've taken a lot of cabs over the years. That's the first time we've been in a cab where that we know of. That were that's true. Yeah. One one pitch is up high. Grown in the first inning, single to right, stole second base. Foul tipped and it's two and two. He also, the guy also wanted to know if we wanted to go to some clubs. Yeah. <laughs> he said he would take us to some clubs till the traffic goes away. And the. He would come with us, he said. Yeah. He said he would join us. I said, no, it's okay. <laughs> let's stay in the traffic and let's, you know. Let's just try to get back to the hotel. Just want to go to the hotel. Yeah. Todd Frazier waiting on deck. One out here in the bottom of the third inning. She's out and pokes it foul off to the right out of play. Now the Red Sox Hall of Fame class of 2014 will be inducted into the Hall of Fame tomorrow beginning at 1230. This will have live coverage of the induction of the greats. Roger Clemens, Nomar Garcia Parra, Pedro Martinez, and Joe Castiglione. And don't miss the special on-field ceremonies begin tomorrow night at 630. 3-2 pitch coming to Negron. And he'll take ball four on for the second time today. First walk allowed by Renato. Missed, but not by very much. Tried that outside part of the plate and uh, just off the corner. For his first walk, he had four in that first outing against the Yankees. One out, one on for Todd Frazier. Fly down to center field in the first inning.
Cubs left a runner on in scoring position in the first inning. Left two on in the second inning. Have a one out base runner here in the third. Outside one and one. Drafted by the Red Sox in the supplemental round, 39th overall in 2010 out of Louisiana State University. Runner goes, and this one driven to center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. is not going to get there. One hops up and over. Brown will double, and it'll be second and third with one out. Todd Frazier on a line drive rope out to left center field. Yeah, probably a break for the Red Sox because if that ball does bounce off the wall, you're talking about a run and you're talking about Frazier probably being at third base. It's a fastball, a two, two seam fastball that stays inside, and Fra Frazier puts a charge in it. Because it bounced up into the uh, stands or out of the field of play, it's only two bases. So a second and third situation with one out. Now a chance here for Devin Messaraco. Flight out to left field in the first inning. Elevates a fastball and Messaraco chasing. He was going for home run number 21 on that swing. Fastball way out of the strike zone. Shoulder high. High and deep to left center field, sending Jackie Bradley Jr. back. Onto the track to make the catch. Tagging is Negron. He will score. Throw to third is not going to be in time. It's Frazier tagged up, and the Reds are on the board. Sack fly for Mesoraco, and it's now 2 1 Boston. Now that's two at bats in a row where the ball's been hit, hit very, very hard. The, the one by Frazier, and now the one by Mesoraco. I thought this ball had a chance to get out of the ballpark, but as Don said earlier, the ball doesn't seem to be carrying all that well. But certainly deep enough for the sacrifice fly. And Frazier to third base, two down, tying run 90 feet away. Brian Pena, the batter. Take ball one high. That's a changeup from Renato. That I believe that's the first one he's thrown today. Pena with a single in the second inning as he singled to center field. 1 0 is high. 2 0. Back and out of play, two and one. Well, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Men's Warehouse, proudly introducing Joseph Abood. Adam and Steve Lyons will talk Red Sox Hall of Fame inductees. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. on Nesson. Two balls and a strike to Brian Pena with two outs and Todd Frazier at third base. Reds have a run in. Inside straightens him up three and one. A 
That's the four seasons in the minor leagues for Renato. 34 and 18 his record during that time. 3.47 earned run average. He's an all-star for International League this year. In the air to shallow right as Holt started back now comes back in and makes the catch it ends the inning the Reds get a run it's 2 1 Boston after three. And community strong. That's why they've been named the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts five years in a row. Eastern Bank, here you're first. Xander Bogarts leading it off here in the fourth inning. Bogarts with a single to center field in the second inning. Bogarts, Bradley Jr., and Butler here in the top of the fourth inning. Sanders single to center field in the second inning. In there for strike one. Are you a Red Sox fan looking for creative ways to fundraise for your nonprofit organization? There's no better place to do so than Fenway Park. Contact our group sales department to learn more about this summer's fundraising packages. Go to RedSox.com slash groups for more details. Bogarts lines one that is caught by Negron at second base. He ducked back to the outfield grass. Positioned pretty well there to make that catch. And Bogarts retired for the first out of the fourth inning. That sounded like it was right toward the end of the bat of Bogarts. Soft line drive out to uh, Negro in a second. One out for Jackie Bradley Jr. who single to center field in the second inning. And Butler waiting on deck, working towards the bottom of the Red Sox order here in the top half of the fourth inning. Inside, two and one.
Riley breaking up an 0 for 35 string with a base hit in the second inning. Now ground ball with all kinds of spin on it to short. Cozart on the run and in time to get Bradley for the second out of the inning. Very nice play by Kozak, the shortstop, because you're right, Don, there was a lot of spin coming off this baseball to the shortstop. He had to go his right also and charge. And on the off-balance uh, throw, makes an accurate throw to first base to Pena to get the out. Two down in the fourth inning for Dan Butler. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Still in search of his first major league hit. There for a strike in, it's one and one. Authentic Mexican is favorite food. Always want to visit Europe. Tim McGraw, favorite musician. Be a firefighter if he wasn't a ball player. And his second major league game for the Red Sox. Fouls it off, and it's two and two. Christian Vasquez did the catching last night. So now Butler's caught uh, two of the last three Red Sox games. Also caught on Sunday. In there for strike three. First strike out of the day for Mike Leak. In order to go the Red Sox, they lead it 2 1. Community Eastern Bank is committed to putting you first. Learn all the ways Eastern puts you first at easternbank.com. We'll play along here to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's two to one. Red Sox on top of the Cincinnati Reds. Two runs, four hits, no errors for Boston. A run, four hits, no errors for Cincinnati. Anthony Renato. So far. Giving up a hit in the first, two in the second, and one in the third. But uh, Reds only putting across one run so far in the game. They have left four men on base through the first three innings, and here they are in the bottom of the fourth. Ryan Ludwig to lead it off. 
Let's take strike one. Ludwig flied out to the right fielder Daniel Nava in the second inning. Fouled off. Ace Ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. All the 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Treat yourself or someone special. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Thirty five year old Ryan Ludwig. Sprays it foul off to the right out of play. Ludwig has been in the big league since 2002, breaking in with the Texas Rangers. Time in Cleveland, St. Louis, San Diego, Pittsburgh, and now in his third year with the Cincinnati Reds. Down the left field line, Cespedes on the run, and he'll get there over towards the line to make the catch for out number one as Ryan Ludwig is retired. So Cespedes going to get it. Kind of a hanging breaking ball that time, and it's a good thing that that stayed in the ballpark. Uh, this suspect is tracking it down, uh, not close to being a home run, but not exactly where Renata would like that pitch. Skip Schumacher, the batter, single to left field in the second inning, one for one. Schumacher, Cardinal from 05 through 2012. Last year, spent the season with the LA Dodgers. At 263 and 125 games last year for the Dodgers. Signed by the Reds to a two year deal. Takes him through 2015 for a club option for 2016. Ball slips out of the hand of Renato and it's two and one. Yeah, both a uh, couple change ups he's tried to throw have been left up in the zone, up high and out of the zone. Off Butler and it's two and two. Sixtieth pitch for an auto coming up with one down here in the fourth inning. High and away, three and two. In the air to deep right field. Back goes Nava and he'll watch this leave. A blast to right field for Skip Schumacher. His second home run of the year and this one ties the game in two. Well, he got away with a curveball on uh, Ludwig but he did not get a away with this fastball on Schumacher. A high fastball about let a high that Schumacher turns around. It's supposed to be away, stays inside and up. And taken out of the ballpark. Number two on the season for Schumacher. Now Zach Cozart fouls the ball back and out of play. Let's tie it up here two to two in the fourth inning. Go 
Ozarn. A check swing right in front of the plates. Fair ball. Butler hops out there. Clears the runner and throws to first for out number two of the inning. Kind of a check swing for Kozar. It ends up being a fair ball. Yeah, those are the kind of bats that really frustrate you. You try to check your swing, all of a sudden you got contact, and worst of all, you got contact in fair territory. It's almost like a wasted at bat. Two down, Mike Leak, the pitcher now bats. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Fly ball for Leak to left, sending Cespedes back to the wall, and that ball is gone. Second home run of the year for the Reds pitcher. Cincinnati with their second home run of the inning, and the Reds take a 3 2 lead. And I'm looking over the stats prior to the game, and to notice that Leak's a pretty good hitter, and he shows it again right here. Came into the game at 137, one home run, make it two. Fastball, center cut. Four career home runs now for Mike Leak. Second of this year, and the Reds have the lead as Billy Hamilton shows bunt, pulls it back. So a solo shot for Schumacher, solo shot for Leak, helping out his own cause. Hamilton showing bun again and taking ball two, two and zero. Oh. Cincinnati's had trouble scoring runs. They're ninth in the National League in home runs. As the pitcher is in there for a strike, high strike at that. Now three fake bunts by uh, Hamilton, and I'm generally against that with two outs, but not in his case because if he can get a bun down for a base hit. He can turn it into a double with a stolen base. He's going to try it. Little drag bunt that goes towards the pitcher, and Renato throws out Hamilton to end the inning. Two solo shots for the Reds, who now lead it three to two.
Had on Anna Red, a Cincinnati Reds jersey on. Maybe he likes both. Uh, he's probably from Cincinnati. Yeah. And, he, you know, he likes both teams. He likes the, loves the Reds. And, 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 you know, for an American League team, he likes the Red Sox. So he's got the Red Sox hat on. Now, the kid. No confusion. He is all Red Sox. Anthony Renato leading it off here for the Red Sox in the fifth inning. Renato reached on a field of choice in the second inning. Just relinquished the lead, giving up solo home runs to Skip Schumacher and to the opposing pitcher, Mike Leak, which has given the Reds a 3 2 advantage here into the fifth. Full count to Renato. Outside corner for strike three. Renato was headed to first base. Thought he had ball four. Second strikeout for Leak. One down here in the fifth. LC location of this pitch is one of those uh, two seamers that comes back to the inside corner. About knee high on Renato. And whoops. <laughs> Thought he was going to first base, but has to uh, retract. Now Brock Holtz sprays it down the left field line is going to get in into the corner. Ludwig over to play it. Holt headed for second base. He'll get there standing with a one out double. First hit of the day for Brock Holt. Now I've seen a couple of lefties today take a uh, leak the, uh, the other way. And that's what they really should be trying to do. Sink a ball pitcher running the ball away from the left handers. Not trying to pull them just go with it. Go to the opposite field and pick up that uh, double. One out Holt in scoring position and here's Daniel Nob who's had a good day. Single to center scored a run and drove in a run and a single to left field in his first two at bats today. It's a fly ball to left. Ludwig back a few steps. Makes the catch for the second out of the inning. No advance for Holt. Two down in the fifth. Let's take a look at today's list brought to you by Benjamin Moore. Top Reds managers. Sparky Anderson, 1970 through 78, 863 wins. Two world championships, two NL pennants. Dusty Baker, third most wins in Reds history with 470. Bill McKechnie. Second most in Reds history, 1940 World Championships, and a 1939 NL pennant winner. And Lou Pinella here, 90 to 92, won World Championship 1990. And a bunch of fights, too, for Pinella and winners. <laughs> <laughs> a few arguments with some umpires, throwing uh, some bases. And players, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Rock Double, yeah. right? Yeah. We have a comment about uh, tonight's list. You can tweet us at hashtag Nesson List. Two down, Holt at second base. You want to Cespedes. Takes the strike, and it's one and one. Runs inside on him. Two and one. Napoli waiting on deck. Red Sox batting with two outs here in the fifth inning. And Brock Holt at second base. Line to left field, and that's in for a hit. Brock Holt being waved around, and this will tie the game. Red Sox tie it up 3 3. Jonas Cespedes drives in the tying run. 
and they kept trying to run the ball back inside the Cespedes, and finally he cleans one out. Picks up his 75th RBI of the season. Line drive that's going to make it to out to the left field, and no problem for Brock Holt to score. The Red Sox tie the score. Mike Napoli with Cespedes at first base. Napoli takes ball one a little bit high. He'll drop outside two and zero. Oh. Mike Leak, mentioned before, taken by the Reds in the first round, eighth overall in 2009, and in big leagues in 2010 with Cincinnati. Opposite field drive for Napoli back to the wall, and that's gone. Mike Napoli, it's a two run home run, and the Red Sox take a 5 3 lead. First home run of the day for Boston, and for Napoli, his 15th of the year. Combination of Cespedes and Napoli coming up big this inning with two outs. Napoli showing strength to the opposite field this time, going. A leap out. That ball in the second, third row. So now 15 on the year for Napoli, a three run fifth for Boston, and now here's a base hit into center field for Kelly Johnson. And he's been 0 for 2. All Town, New England's premier convenient retailer, is committed to supporting the communities they serve. For every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, All Town will donate $500 to the Cystic Fibrosis Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Visit www.cfmsfund.org for more information. And the pitching coach, Jeff Pico, out there. H.B. Hood knows that nothing is cooler than an innocent child being struck by cancer. We thank Hood for their contributions to the Red Sox Foundation, which gives generously to the Jimmy Fund. We thank Hood for helping us stand up to cancer. Let's strike it out now. So Johnson at first base and Xander Bogart's the batter. Xander one for two today. Action for the first time for the Reds today. J.J. Hoover, right-hander up. Starting to stop at first for Johnson as the pitch misses outside, 2-0. So just taking a 3 2 lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. But the Red Sox so far with three here in the fifth, and back and forth we go. In there for a strike, and it's two and one. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Jackie Bradley Jr. on deck. Foul 
fouled off over by the Red Sox dugout and hangs at two and two. Most runs the Red Sox have scored on the road trip in one game. Not yet out of the fifth inning. Swing and a foul tip held on to by Mazzarocco. Now the Red Sox with three runs in the fifth, a two run home run from Mike Napoli. What a bargain furniture superstore for amazingly low prices on new and slightly used office furniture, equipment, and supplies. You'll be the office MVP. Visit whatabargain.com. Who but WB Mason. Now back at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. Red Sox now have a 5 3 lead. Here's the pitching line for Anthony Renato. It's brought to you by Ace Tickets. Four innings, six hits, three runs, a walk, and no K's. Red Sox giving him some offensive support today to the tune of five runs, eight hits. And it's on to the bottom of the fifth inning. Grown taking a pitch high for ball one. Third plate appearance for Chris Negron. Single to right in the first, walked and scored in the third. Falls behind 2 0. Woods have had at least one base runner in every inning. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Three and one. It's been the problem when he's got in trouble today. A lot of pitches have been left up in the zone, up and out of the zone. Fly ball headed out towards deep left center field. Cespedes racing back. So is Bradley Jr. And that's going to fall on the warning track. Kick off the wall. McGrone's taking three. He's headed to third, and he will be there safely. A triple to start at the bottom of the fifth inning for the Reds. And it's 
the third time now that uh, Negron has been on today. That fastball was down, but it was down and in. And it finds that gap between Bradley Jr. and Cespedes. Bradley Jr. making a very strong throw in the third base, made it a close play. But Negron able to beat it. Negron at third base. Single walk and now a triple. And here is Todd Frazier. We'll drop in there for strike one. Barely. Frazier flied out to center field in the first inning. Last time up double to center. Center field, Bradley Jr. back playing, get himself ready as he makes the catch. Tagging is Negron. Throw to the plate is not going to be in time, and the Reds get back within a run. It's now five to four on the sack fly by Todd Frazier. That's one of those games today. We haven't had one of these. It seems like the whole road trip. Bradley Jr. doing everything he could to get himself in position to make a throw home, but uh, he was way too deep to be able to get anybody. One out. Base is empty for Miserocco, who is 0 for 2. Slide to left and had a sack fly. So actually, he's 0 for 1 with a sack fly. 63rd RBI of the year. And as the curveball called a strike. We're going to miss. Fastball up and away. Was supposed to be inside, ends up away, so you get the swing and miss. Popped up. And a shallow left. Bogart's out. And the Cespit is coming in basket style. So two down here in the fifth inning. Alexander might have been in trouble there. So he was moving back. Yeah, and I thought after the catch, Cespit was going to run the ball all the way to the mound and just hand it to the pitcher. He's going full speed as you see him call it right there, make the catch, and here he comes. Where's the pigeon? There you go. Two down for Brian Pena. One for two in the game. Pena with a single to center in the second inning. Popped out to second base in the third. And he takes strike one. This time at the bottom of the zone. And Pena has questions for Jerry Meals. Call a lot of high strikes, but this one was a low one. A low one, and that's really where Renato wants to be with his pitches down there. Ground ball at Holt at second base. Throws out Pena and ends the inning, but the Reds pick up a run. It's now 5 4 Red Sox.
Pharmacy will make a donation to Boston Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 donation once again this season. CVS Pharmacy, the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Lots of sunshine here in Cincinnati. Red Sox have a 5-4 lead heading into the top of the sixth inning. And a new pitcher now into the game for the Reds. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. J.J. Hoover, who had been warming up last inning, comes in for Mike Leake here in the sixth inning. 42nd appearance, 1-8, and eight, his record of 5.33 earned run average. 62 strikeouts to 27 walks, and opponents hitting at 247 against Hoover. Celebrating his 27th birthday today. Jackie Bradley Jr. leads it off and takes strike one. In the last four innings that Hoover has worked, he's had seven strikeouts. So Leak pitches the first five innings of today's game, departs on the hook. There's Bradley. It's a fly ball down the right field line. Long run for Schumacher towards the line, and it'll land foul. Well, don't miss the $20 million Summer of Dreams at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Discover the hottest events and specials every day throughout the resort all summer long. Visit foxwoods.com. Hell, if nothing else, the Reds have some very big guys that are coming out of the bullpen. This is another one right here. <laughs> That was uh, Jonathan Broxton in last night's game. And Jumbo Diaz, who came in last night as well, as yeah. Bradley strikes out for the first out of the sixth inning. I mean, three huge guys. And uh, fastball by Bradley here for the first out of the sixth inning. Fastball up and in. Tough pitch for Jackie to lay off right there. One down for Dan Butler. And Mike Leak today went five innings, eight hits, five runs. Walked about or struck out three. Gave up a two run home run to Mike Napoli. And Leak offensively had a home run, which at the time put his team on top three to two. Side for ball two, two and one. Butler today, 0 for 2. He's reached on a field his choice and struck out looking. Curveball drops in there for strike two. Anthony Renato on deck. Action in the Red Sox pen. Breslow warming. Renato on deck for now. To center field, Billy Hamilton spins around, heads back, and makes the catch. It's pretty shallow to begin with, but not a problem going back. Takes him all the way to the warning track. Dan Butler making a bid for his first major league hit, but he's out number two. Yeah, Hamilton's a guy that can play shallow because of his great speed. And he shows it off here. Got a very good jump on a ball that's directly over his head. That's a tough play. The ball that goes directly over the center fielder's head, and Hamilton's able to chase it down, track it down for the out. Two down here in the sixth inning, and it is Renato batting for himself and late on the fastball. Renato 0 for 2 so far, his third at bat of the day.
Strike call, and it's two and two. Only Para up in the pen now for the Reds. J.J. Hoover coming in here in the sixth inning has two outs. Striking out Bradley, getting Butler to fly out to center. Now Renato strikes out on a fastball that ends the inning. Five and a half done, 5-4 Boston. Securing a one-run lead against the Reds, guys, and we all know Brandon Workman was supposed to make the start today, and before the game, I actually got a chance to catch up with him. Actually, on his birthday today, but uh, not pitching today, saying he's actually was looking forward to this day off because he's been noticing a decrease in the velocity of his fastballs, not even just Saturday night when he came into a relief in that 19 inning affair but throughout the last five or so starts he's noticed a decrease in velocity and John Farrell has said the same thing and he says it's partly because Workman's such a young pitcher and he pitched so deep last season into the postseason that he's just now starting to see those effects of a young pitcher's arm starting to get those effects of pitching too many innings so skipping the start today that should help him reform his his uh, mechanics and get back to you know the mid 90s where he's used to seeing that fastball guys he says he's looking forward to going against the angels on monday night because he only faced the one batter in albert pujols and we know how that ended all right gary thanks very much well renato today working in place of brandon workman skipping his spot as renato works here into the sixth inning and ludwig to lead it off for cincinnati ludwig has fly to right fly to left 0 for two so far in the game Late addition to the lineup today. Jay Bruce out of the lineup, not feeling well before the game, so they change right before the game. And Ludwig now pops it up. Foul and out of play. Cincinnati starting the day, five and a half games back at the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League Central. Perhaps more realistically involved in the wild card race. They're Two and a half games back, uh, both the Cardinals and Pirates. One one pitch. Popped up left side. Bogarts to the outfield grass for the first out of the bottom of the sixth inning. Now look at the standings in the wild card scenario. Of course, they have the Giants and Braves between them. Pirates and the Cardinals. Brian Price hoping to play better baseball here so far than the Reds have since the All-Star break. 
Having trouble scoring runs. Today they have four runs, but trail five to four as they bat with one out. Skip Schumacher takes pitch inside. Schumacher two for two, single to left, and a solo home run, his second home run of the year, and one of two home runs allowed by Anthony Renato today. Back in the fourth inning with one out, bases empty, the drive to Rice. In there for strike two, one and two. Well, Renato in his first outing against New York, six innings, four hits, two runs. He walked four, struck out two. Two with one out in the sixth inning. I think in the first outing he had down against the Yankees, he had better command of his pitches than he does this afternoon. I remember more pitches that were down last time. Yeah, a lot time. of a lot of pitches upstairs today. A lot of fastballs upstairs. A couple of changeups. Swing and a miss, and on the back swing, Schumacher gets Butler as he strikes out. Two down here in the sixth inning. It's just the first strikeout of the day for Renato. And that was a very good curveball for Renato right there. The best he's probably thrown all afternoon. Good shot break to it. Starts at about belt high, ends up uh, on the ground. Two down five in a row retired by Renato and Zach Cozart the batter. No for two in the game for Cozart. So he takes strike one. Fouled out to the first baseman Mike Napoli in the second then and on excuse me check swing in the fourth and a little dribbler right in front of the plate. Thrown out by Dan Butler at first base. Now a ground ball back up the middle into center field. Two out single for Zach Cozart. Reds have their eighth hit of the day. Well, tune in tonight at 10 p.m. to Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Leah and Sarah will have Tom Brady's sound for Patriots practice and have the latest on the Bruins' offseason moves. See what know how can do. The pitch hitter coming up here in the pitcher's spot, Chris Heisey, who played in last night's game in the outfield. Pitch hits here, hitting at 226. Four homers and 14 runs batted in. So, batting in the spot of J.J. Hoover. Worked the sixth inning, one, two, three inning with two strikeouts. As he chops one to third, it is a fair ball. Johnson's long throw dug out by Napoli, and he kept the foot on the bag. So it retires Heisey and ends the inning. Nice play by Napoli. 5 4, Boston at the end of six.
the seventh inning, and this was close down the line as it was called fair. And finding that out over his shoulder was Kelly Johnson, and then nice play by Napoli on the other side. Yeah, very tough to tell, uh, but from that angle, it looks like it might have been a foul ball. Uh, they they questioned it. They can't challenge it. And the umpire uh, Baker stood by his ruling of a fair ball. So the Red Sox do get out of the inning. Well, third pitcher of the day for the Reds coming in, Manny Parra, who had been warming up last inning. And the left hander comes into his 42nd game of the year without a record of 3.62 earned run average, 31 strikeouts to 12 walks, and opponents hitting at 257 against Parra. Hasn't allowed a run since May the 25th against St. Louis. 20 games and 10 and a third innings for Parra. The 20 apparent scoreless streak, a new career high for Parra. 41 appearances without a win or a loss, the most in the National League. Rock Holt, top of the Red Sox order to lead it off here in the seventh inning. Holt has walked, grounded out, and doubled. He has scored two runs. And there for strike one to Brock Holt. Kirk Baden hop up in the Red Sox pen. We saw Craig Breslow warming up earlier as Dustin Pedroia has come out on deck here for the Red Sox. On the day off until now for Pedroia. Rare day off for Dustin. Holt with a swing and a miss down 0 and 2. In the dirt, ball and two strikes to Holt. Manny Parra breaking into the big leagues of the Milwaukee Brewers in 2007. In Milwaukee from 2007 through 2012, last year, his first year in Cincinnati. Ground ball rolled over to first base and picked and Pena tags the bag at first for the first out of the inning. It's time for a Toyota game break and Adam Pellerin. Adam. All right, thanks very much, Adam. Back here in Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark with one out in the top of the seventh inning. And Dustin Pedroia pinch hitting here for Daniel Nava and taking strike one. Nava had been two for three in the game with a RBI, two singles. Rolls it over foul and is down 0 and 2. Well, attention, Red Sox Nation. There's a reason why the Boston Red Sox and the rest of America run on Dunkin' because our coffee is consistently smooth and delicious. Dunkin' Donuts Coffee is the number one coffee in New England. So when you want the best coffee in town, there's only one choice Dunkin' Donuts. The Boston Red Sox run on Dunkin'. One out in the seventh, a 0 2 pitch coming up. And Pedroia grounds another one foul. Back to back breaking balls uh, from Parra that time, and uh, just about the same result from Pedroia. Tapping the ball toward the third base dugout. Parra, the former starter, and with Milwaukee. 27 starts back in 2009. Most wins he had in his season was 11, and that was in 2009 for Milwaukee. Won 10 games the year before as a starter. Sam LeClure up in the bullpen. LeClure has just gotten up. Oh, 
swing and grounds another one foul. Summer is in full swing and so are specially priced Red Sox tickets for students. Student tickets are available for every Sox game. Tickets start at just $9. So go to RedSox.com slash student to take advantage of this great offer today. Well, Middlebrook says come out on deck here for Cespedes' spot. So some interesting pinch hitting going on here in the seventh inning. It certainly is. <laughs> One two is fouled back and out of play. When they're assessed, but it's might have hurt himself. Uh, I'm one of those fly balls that they had to charge in on. Can't seem to find him anywhere in the Red Sox dugout at the moment. One two pitch to Pedroia reaches out pops it up down the first baseline Pena and Negron and Negron makes the catch and runs into the tarp nice play second out of the seventh inning as Pedroia fouls out two down that's a very very nice play by uh, Negron down that first baseline he had a long way to go he's fighting his son a little bit he's fighting his first baseman not sure he was going to be there and then runs into the top after making the catch very nice play. Great concentration all the way through that play. Two down and Middlebrooks to pinch hit here. Well, at 180, two homers and 10 runs batted in. And a swing and a miss for strike one. Brooks sold for four here last night as he got the start at third base. Three for 26 on the road trip. And down on the count, 0 and 2. Bouncing in one and two. And so five innings for Mike Leake. He gives up the five runs the Red Sox have. J.J. Hoover went an inning pitching the sixth at two strikeouts. And retired all three batters he faced. Manny Parra has the first two outs here of the seventh inning. It's now six in a row retired by Reds pitching. Middlebrook strikes out to end the top of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch, 5 4 Boston.
And if Green Mountain Coffee Cake Cup packs will keep you running and guarantees to satisfy any fan base, order by 11.30 a.m. and get free same-day delivery. Who but W.B. Mason. Now some changes for the Red Sox as Brock Holt takes over in right field, moving from second base to right field. Kelly Johnson from third base to left field. And Cespedes was hit for in the inning. New looking infield now with Will Middlebrooks in at third base. And Dustin Pedroia at second base. Red Sox also with a new pitcher into the game after Anthony Renato with the first six innings. Burke Badenhop comes into his 53rd game of the year, 0-2. With a 2.63 earned run average, 32 Ks to 16 walks. And Billy Hamilton, the top of the order to lead it off, takes strike one. Hamilton was 0 for 3 against Anthony Renato. Grounding out, popping out, and grounding out again. So Renato today, six innings, eight hits, four runs. He walked about her, struck out about her. And has the chance for his second major league win as he departs, needing some help from the pen. Not as sharp today as he was in his first outing against New York. Uh, I don't think so. Not uh, location wise, anyway. I mean, the stuff was basically the same, but uh, has had a tough time, in my opinion, getting his fastball down. Consistently. Very few change ups uh, in the game for him. To second base, and Pedroia throws to first for out number one of the seventh inning. Well, stay tuned today following WB Mason X Shootings Live for Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Send your questions to Adam at hashtag Sox Final. Maybe yours will be answered on Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Right hand contusion, the reason for Cespedes leaving the game. It was hit for in the seventh inning by Will Middlebrooks. One down in the seventh. Chris Negron, the batter. And he'll take a pitch down low for ball one. Done that. I don't remember anything that sticks out. No, not unless it was on a swing. Could have been on a swing. I know he got jammed earlier in the ball game. Got a base hit out of it, as a matter of fact. On the ground towards Pedroia. Slides to his right. Throws out Negron. Two down in the seventh inning. Pedroia just into the game and two assists here in the seventh. Brings up the heart of this Reds order. Todd Frazier coming up. Frazier fly down to center field in the first. Double to center in the third and then had a sack fly out there. In the fifth inning picked up his 64th RBI of the year. Little roller down the third baseline, little trickle foul. Well, Baden Hop coming into the game here in the seventh inning for Boston. Got the first two outs of the seventh inning last night. Faced only two batters. Well, Santiago and Zach Cozart. Sixth straight scoreless appearance and now five innings. Three games now he's appeared in on the year. Fifth straight year that he has seen at least 50 games since uh, 2010. In fact, uh, has appeared in 60 plus games in each of the last two years. And will likely do the same this season. Greg Breslow in the Red Sox pen, been warming up earlier. And as 
just been warming up in the pen out there moments ago. Jonathan Broxton we saw in last night's game Sam LeCur up in the pen as well. Two pitch outside, two and two. Low full count. On the ground with shortstop Xander Bogarts able to throw out Frazier and end the seventh inning. Coming up for the Red Sox, Napoli Johnson of Bogarts. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Five to four, Red Sox have a lead over the Cincinnati Reds as we head to the eighth inning. Let's take a look at the pitching line for Mike Leak, brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. The starter today for the Reds, who's on the hook. Five innings, eight hits, five runs. He walked a batter, struck out three, threw 83 pitches in the game, and gave up a two run home run to Mike Napoli as part of a three run fifth inning. Last inning, he worked here today. And we head on here to the eighth inning and a new pitcher Sam LeCure into the game here for the Reds 46 appearance one and four the three point six four earned run average 36 strikeouts to 16 walks and opponents hitting at 294 against him. Reds pitching is now retired the last seven Red Sox in a row. Napoli leading it off in the eighth one for three. He'll pop it up. Foul ground as Mazzarocco, the catcher, gives way to Frazier, the third baseman, for the first out of the eighth inning. 
Arbella Insurance Foundation is the proud presenting sponsor of the WEI Ness and Jimmy Fund Radio Telethon. This season dedicated to striking out cancer and kids. Arbella donates $50 for every strikeout thrown by a Sox pitcher up to $100,000. Arbella Insurance Foundation here for the Jimmy Fund, here for good. One out for Kelly Johnson. Started the game as the Red Sox third baseman is now shifted to left field. Rounded into a double play in the first inning, bounced out to second in the third, and then singled to center in the fifth. Swing and a miss. Down one and two. Good off speed pitch there by LaClure to uh, get an off balance swing from Kelly Johnson. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox, now offers walk-in urgent care in Chestnut Hill. It's open 10 hours a day for minor emergencies. For more information, go to BIDMC.org slash Chestnut Hill. One down in the eighth inning. Johnson waiting on a 1-2 pitch. And the curveball sails outside 2-2. Two and two. Xander Bogarts waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the top half of the eighth inning, holding on to a one run lead. In there for strike three. Early froze Johnson. First strikeout for LeCur, two down. That's his same fastball that time that started out right at Kelly Johnson. You're going to see him flinch a little bit right here, and then the ball spins in and. Picks up the inside corner right at the top of the strike zone. Big insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Two down in the eighth inning for Xander Bogarts. Single back in the second inning. Since then, he's lined out to second and struck out swinging. In there for strike one. Breslow has sat down. Chinichi Tozawa up for the Red Sox in the pen. Reds will have Mazzarocco, Pena, and Ludwig expected in the eighth inning. Four, five, and six for Cincinnati. Flared foul off to the right. Don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live presented by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union tomorrow at 6. Adam and Steve Lyons will have the class of 2014 Red Sox Hall of Fame induction ceremony live. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Are you hearing the same thing in your ear that I'm hearing? I'm not hearing anything. You're not hearing, you're not hearing promo in your ear? Promo? Promo? <laughs> you hear like promo on my ear all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there have been several. Yeah. I've heard a lot of them. You've been a lot. To read them. <laughs> All I hear is promo. <laughs> I feel like today is a record, actually. I'm told it's not even close, but I feel like it is. Maybe this inning was a record. <laughs> Six. Swing and a miss. And Bogart's down on strikes. Back to back K's. Red Sox down in order, but lead five to four.
the new Scion TC, Dunkin' Donuts, and by Southwest Airlines. Now back at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, where the Red Sox have a 5-4 lead over the Reds. And the Red Sox move on to their third pitcher of the day as Chinichi Tozawa comes in for Boston. Tozawa into his 55th game of the year, 2-3 and three with a 3.38 earned run average. 48 strikeouts, 12 walks, and opponents hitting at 270 against Tozawa. Suffered his fourth blown save of the year on Saturday in L.A. And that, of course, was late in the game. That was in the 14th inning that he pitched of a 19-inning game. He allowed the game-tying run. In the 14th, an inning, two hits and a run. Walk and a strikeout. He's now appeared in seven of the last 11 Red Sox games. Last nine games, he's gone one and two with a 7.27 earned run average. Seven earned runs and eight and two thirds. That's after the first 45 games of the year with a 2.52 ERA and a one and one record. As Arako to lead it off here in the bottom of the eighth for Cincinnati. And the curveball in there for strike one. Aldous Chapman, the closer for the Reds, warming in the pen. Just had a shot at Chapman in the bullpen. His numbers are incredible. In 36 and a third innings, he has 71 strikeouts. Mazzarocco takes, and it's a little bit low. Two and one. By Pena and Ludwig scheduled to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tozawa takes over for Burke Badenhop, who pitched the seventh, the one, two, three inning, all ground ball outs for Badenhop. Ground ball pitcher getting Hamilton, Negron, and Frazier on ground ball outs. Line down the left field line foul. David Ortiz yet in this game. Red Sox in the top of the ninth inning will have Bradley Jr., Dan Butler, and the pitcher's spot due. As Arocco fouls it off to the right out of play. Tommy Lane, the left-hander up in the Red Sox pen, has been getting plenty of use lately for Boston. Now he's kind of taken over that role that uh, Andrew Miller had late in the game and has been up to the task. Was closing games for the Paw Sox at 11 saves this season for Pawtucket. 2 2 pitch. And did he go? They'll check. No, he did not, says Paul Emmel. Once again, trying the curveball. And uh, is there a swing? No, no swing there. Swing and a miss. 
Elevated at 96 and strikes out Mesoraco for the first out of the eighth inning. I think he's surprised with that fastball. He saw so many breaking balls in that at bat that the Zawa just uh, rears back at 96 outside corner. And I don't think he was ready for that. One down in the eighth inning and Brian Pena coming up. And is singled in the second inning, popped out to second in the third, grounded out to second base in the fifth. And he takes strike one. Anthony Renato starting today, going the first six innings, eight hits, four runs, walked a batter, struck out a batter. Kicks off a Butler and well short of home plate. Two and one. And I tried to split finger fastball that time and uh, nowhere close to be even tempting for Pena. Juan Nieves looking on as Tozawa has the first out here in the eighth. But behind Brian Pena, two and one. Foul back and it's two and two. Well, tomorrow night will be a very special night at Fenway. The Red Sox Hall of Fame class of 2014 will be joining Jerry and me in the booth throughout the game. Make sure you don't miss tomorrow night's game. First pitch is at 7 p.m. Should be a special day tomorrow at Fenway Park. Ceremony starting at what, 12.30 tomorrow? Yes. And the pregame ceremony at 6.30. You want to make sure to tune into the pregame show early. Two two is lined and caught first base by Napoli went up to get it and brings it down. Yeah, beautifully timed by Mike Napoli at first base. That ball an absolute rocket off the bat of Pena and Napoli is there to make the leaping catch. You see out of his crouch one step to his right and then the jump. Maybe extra bases he takes away right there from Pena. So two down here in the eighth inning, six in a row, retired by Red Sox pitching, brings up Ryan Ludwig. No for threes, fly to right, fly to left, and popped out to shortstop. Curveball, which uh, Tozawa has been breaking out more this year than I remember at any point last year. Yeah, and, and more today than any point on this road trip, I think. Outside, two and zero. Oh. Fouls it off to the right. He's expecting fastball. Got it, but fouls it off. A 
Arenado today going six innings and Burke Baden half an inning now to Zawa on here for the eighth. Fired the first two batters that he has faced. A little help from his first baseman, Mike Napoli, with a good catch. And David Ortiz get a bat in hand. Pitcher spot third in the order when the Red Sox bat in the ninth. Ludwig takes strike two. And a fastball on the outside corner. Field deep in straight away on Ludwig with Schumacher waiting on deck. Swing and a miss, and Tazawa strikes out Ludwig. We played eight with the Red Sox on top five to four. Rickley continued the preview of division rivals with the Florida Panthers. Plus Louis Erickson, Tuka Rast, Daniel Paye, and Gregory Campbell. All Sean Thornton's putts and punches for Parkinson's golf tournament. It all begins tonight at 7.30. Well, ten in a row retired by Reds pitching as we head into the ninth inning and some changes as Chris Negron moves from second base to left field. And into the game at second base is Ramon Santiago. He gets started second base last night, part of a double switch that has Mr. 103 coming into the game, Araldus Chapman, the closer for the Cincinnati Reds, coming in here trying to preserve what is a one run deficit for Cincinnati. His 37th appearance of the year, 0 and 3, with a 1.98 earned run average, 25 out of 27 and save opportunities. 36 in the third innings, 71 strikeouts. The number Jerry gave you an inning ago. Very impressive for Chapman. Jackie Bradley Jr. to lead it off. Bradley one for three in the game, a single back in the second inning. Beginning last year in August the 21st, Araldus Chapman has recorded at least one strikeout in each of his last 48 appearances. It's the longest strikeout streak in Major League history by a reliever. Jackie Bradley Jr. leading it off in the ninth inning. 
But Sox would love to obtain some insurance here, only on top by a run. Look out. And Bradley gets hit with the first pitch. 100 mile an hour fastball. Now that'll certainly get your attention, won't you? Wow. You got no time. No time to get out of the way of that. First batteries hit this season. It was right off the bicep. Or a tricep. That would be a tricep, tricep. done, yeah. Now Dan Butler with nobody out, lead runner on. Butler 0 for 3 today. First to check at first base on Bradley. On a fielder's choice in the second, struck out looking in the fourth, flying out to the warning track in center in the sixth. Now well, Butler probably up there to try to bunt, but th that's not going to be an easy task with a guy throwing as hot as this. Starting to stop at first for Bradley Jr. He hopped out there like he was going to steal a base. Butler not showing any signs of scoring as the pitch misses up and away. Zarocco, the catcher out there to talk to Chapman. All Town, New England's premier convenience retailer, is committed to supporting the communities they serve. For every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, All Town will donate $500 to the Cystic Fibrosis Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Visit www.cfmsfund.org for more information. Two zero pitch from Chapman, and that's in there for a strike. Took a little off at ninety nine. Yeah, take a little bit off and, and throw a strike, would you please? So he did ninety nine. Only his third appearance of the month so far, and this is August the thirteenth. That's pitched on Saturday against Miami. Elevates. And it's strike two, two and two. Yeah, once again, a ball up and way out of the strike zone. But I mean, it's so hard. Velocity is so high that it's just hard to lay off. Has a lot of run in his last six appearances, an all star for the third time this year. Runner goes, a swing and a miss for strike three, but Bradley Jr. into second base. So Butler strikes out, but Bradley steals second base with one out in the ninth. That was no contest there as far as Bradley goes. It takes uh, Chapman a long time to get that ball to home plate. Big high leg kick, as you can see, brings his foot way back. He does get the strikeout, but a stand up steal a second. Pinch hitter here for the Red Sox. As Corey Brown pinch hits here. Enter the Red Sox active roster on the 5th of August. His first major league stint of the year. 226 average with the Paw Sox in 83 games. His thinking is here, Jerry. If you put Ortiz up there, they'll just walk him. But I'm not so sure. sure. I, I, you know, I'm not so sure. I think this guy might go right after Ortiz. 
So then why wouldn't you have Ortiz in here? Well, they're, they're thinking they, you know, they they probably lose him, but I would, I'd go right after him. This guy throws too hard. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. Swing and a miss, and Browns down on three pitches, two down in the ninth. And once again, back to the fastball, and the fastball this time down at 102 miles an hour. So two down, and Brock Holt, the batter. Has been on twice today. Walk in the first, a double in the fifth. Score two runs. I wonder if Uihara would be available today with all the work that he's gotten lately. It appears he is not. Uhika getting ready for the ninth inning. Side one and one. The joy on deck if the inning continues. There are two outs here in the ninth. Back to back strikeouts for Chapman. A little bit high for ball two. Actually tried a breaking ball that time. Slider. That's almost like doing you a favor. Got to show it once in a while, though. Foul back two and two. Probably back to the bag. It's second.
as Renato and Leak start this game. Renato, a chance for his second Major League win as he departs after six innings today, giving up four runs on eight hits. Red Sox have used Baden Hop and Dezawa in this game since then, and the Red Sox getting a home run, a two run shot for Mike Napoli today. Napoli's 15th home run of the year. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Edward Mujica into the game. He is two for three and save opportunities on the year as Uihara has got a lot of use lately. Mujica is going to get another opportunity for a save. In his 46th game of the year, two and four with a 4.60 earned run average, 29 strikeouts to nine walks. And comes on for Tazawa. Had a 1 2 3 eighth inning. Red Sox pitching has retired the last seven. Reds in a row. Skip Schumacher leads it off here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Schumacher with a home run back in the fourth inning. One of two home runs today for the Reds. Just his second home run of the year. Line to right and a base hit to start the ninth inning. Take a wide turn at first, but hold on with a leadoff single to begin the bottom of the ninth inning. Let's check back in with Gary. Guys, I'm not a superstitious person, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. If the Red Sox can hold on and get out of here with a win, it'll make them 5-3 and three on this road trip. And believe it or not, it'll be their first road trip that they've actually won more than three games. They took two of three in Baltimore to open up the season and then they took two of three in Houston right before the All-Star break. So if they win today, it'll give them five wins out of the eight here on the road. Their first road winning streak longer than three games. There's the lead runner on here in the ninth inning, Zach Kozart, the batter. And first to check at first base on Schumacher. Zach Kozart. In the grass at third is Middlebrooks. Lazard is squaring and he offers at it, fouls it off. Mujica with 37 saves last year. The St. Louis Cardinals. For the first stand, back to the bag is Schumacher. Squares and tries to get it down, but fouls it off, trying to get it out of the way of his face. Yeah, it's a good thing he bunted that ball. That ball might have hit him right in the face. Fastball up and in from Mahika right here, as you can see. And if boy, it's a good thing he did get that bat out in front of that. One attempts and Kozart down 0 and 2. Takes ball one. Don Santiago waiting on deck for the double switch. To left and a base hit. Back to back hits here for the Reds to open up the bottom of the ninth inning. Second hit for Kozart of the day. Now, after trying a couple of bunt attempts, he gets the slide at that time and uh, the ball is down, but it gets a lot of the plate. Goes on with the line drive. So now they're back in a bunting situation to see if they can manage second and third. 
Don't miss WB Mason's extra innings live right after the game. The guys will break down Anthony Renato's start and have John Farrell's postgame comments. Can't go wrong when you buy right at WB Mason. Two on, nobody out for Cincinnati in the ninth. And Santiago hitting for the first time today. They're in at the corners anticipating the bunt. And Santiago fouls the first one back to the screen. is going to fall harmlessly but it's 0 2 so the Reds unable to get bunts down here Santiago may be the type of guy who would try it again with two strikes we'll see yeah, that's quite possible and he we, you know he's been trying to get it down that third baseline like he should but uh, the bat angle has not been a very good one for him it's been underneath the baseball Single for Schumacher to begin the inning. A single for Cozart. And Santiago trying to get a bunt down. He does have two strikes. We'll see if they take it off. Or if he tries himself to try to get it down. He is squaring and he's out. Strikes out for the first out of the ninth inning. That was very poor effort right there by Santiago. He. He never looked like he was comfortable in that bunting position at all and was jabbing at the ball instead of trying to catch the ball. See him punch at it? Terrible bat angle. So one out in the ninth inning cannot advance the base runners. Now the top of the order. Only Hamilton, the batter, very tough guy to double up. With his kind of speed, he is 0 for 4 in this game, though. He has grounded out three of the four times he's batted and popped out. Fly ball to center field. Bradley Jr. is out there almost in his tracks waiting, and he puts it away. Two down. So two outs in the ninth inning. Two big outs for Mujica. It's Negron coming up here for the Reds. It's had a good day. Single to right, a walk, scored a run, then tripled and scored a run. In fact, the last run the Reds have back in the fifth inning. Grounded out to second base last time up. Two down, ninth inning, two on for Cincinnati. Tying run is at second base. Potential winning run at first base for the Reds. Negron takes ball one. Mika worked in the game last night going a third of an inning at the final out of the eighth inning. Back and it's a ball and a strike. 32,870 on hand here today. 32,870, a smaller crowd than what we had last night. The groan hits it back off of Mujica, stays with it, but throws the first, and the Red Sox win. Right back at him, glancing off his body, throws to first to get the groan, and the Red Sox sweep the Cincinnati Reds in this brief two-game series, and Mujica picks up the save. 
painfully picks up the save. Well, I thought this ball was going right up the middle, right underneath uh, Mahika. Instead, he knocks it down, and it doesn't go very far from him, right down in front of him, picks it up, and throws the run around. Wow. I thought that ball was up the middle. Five to four, the final will step away and come back with more from Cincinnati right after this.